What we're going to be going over here is the actual return on pension plan assets. Now, pension plan assets are usually investments in stocks, bonds, and other securities that are held by the company here to earn a reasonable return on the pension plan. Now, what we're going to be looking at here is what we call the actual return on the plan assets. Now, that's really composed of two different components here. So, uh, we have the interest and dividends that accumulate within the fund here, and any increases or decreases in the market value of those securities. So they're fair value here. And then they're going to be reduced by, or we're going to have to deduct the difference between the contributions made to the pension fund, less the benefits paid. Okay, so this is our general equation here for computing the actual return on our plan assets. So this is our actual return and it's equal to the two main components here. First off, we have to calculate the fair value of those securities within the funds here, and then they're going to re, 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 be reduced here by the difference between the comp contributions here and the benefits paid. Okay, so first off for calculating our fair value. Well, we would have to know what our plan assets, their beginning balance is here, and that we would have to calculate the fair value here, and that would include any interest or dividends and so forth that would be tied to these assets. And then uh, at, we compare it to the plan assets, the ending balance. Again, we have to go and we have to calculate the fair value of the assets or the securities that are being held here by the fund, and we'd be looking at the ending balance here. So uh, difference between the uh, ending balance and the beginning balance is going to give us uh, be the first component here of the uh, actual return here on these uh, plan assets. And then we would have to subtract out again the difference between the contributions made to the pension fund uh, minus the benefits paid to the retirees, tire, retirees or paid out of the pension fund. Okay, so I'm, I've got a laid out here where we really got, uh, we're going to be just looking at the three accounts here. We're going to be looking at our pension expense, that's at our annual expense, and those. then we're going to be looking at our pension benefit obligation. That's just the liability account, keeping track of our pension fund here. And then our plan assets, that is the asset account here to keep track of our pension fund. So what we're really going to concentrate on is this actual return here. So. And we'll look at that here, just going through some numbers here. So when we really think about this actual return, well, we typically think of just a difference between whatever uh, securities that we're holding here. And we're just, normally you think of just the plan assets, the difference between your ending and beginning balance. But when you're dealing with the pension plan here, they have to be reduced by our contributions and our benefits paid here, the difference between those amounts. Okay, so let's just start, say for example here, we have a beginning balance here in our plan assets, say at 640,000 here. So I'm just showing up here, our A amount here, again, has to be at the fair value. Just remember, whatever the fair value is, and that would include the interest and dividends, so forth here on those plan assets. And then we have to look at the fair value at the end. In this case, what I had here, debit, or increase our plan assets here, our asset accounts for $640,000 at the beginning of the year here, and then moving down to the end of the year here. Again, we have to calculate what the fair value of our assets are. Those are the securities, the investments we made at the end of the year here and that would include our interest, dividends, and so forth. Okay, so now we've got that sitting here. Now let's look at um, the other thing we would have. Now let's move over to this side of the equation here where we'd be subtracting the different, uh, subtracting out our contributions here. Well, you can see we had $105,000 contributed to our plan assets, and let's just say they were paid out of cash here. So we would reduce our cash, debited or increase our plan assets here for $105,000. But then payments made to the retirees here, that was those benefit payments. Well, those would be a credit or a reduction to our plan assets here of, in this case, $40,000. So had we summed up all our debits and credits here, we would have come up with, uh, starting with our beginning balance here, adding our debits and credits here, we'd have come up with our fair value here of $769,000. But the point is here, we have to know, just by definition here, this actual return here on plan assets includes the uh, difference between your benefits here or your contributions that are made here and and also the benefits that are paid out by going back and looking at our equation here. Okay, now let's look at, we'll, we'll go down and further look at it, how we made our calculations here. But 
understanding what this actual return is here, the debit amount here, or in, in let's say we had a positive return here on our plan assets for the year of $64,000. So that would have debited or increased our asset account here by $64,000. But had we moved over to, well, where would the credit go here? So really that goes against our pension expense. Those were the returns here. And there was a positive return on the investment here. So that actually reduced our pension expense here. A debit amount here increases our pension expense. Uh, and remember, it's a liability account here. And a credit here actually reduces our pension expense based on the return here, the actual return that we're looking at here, $64,000. So if we go down here and look at our, our actual return here, if we have a plus, or we actually had an increase, increase over the year here, that means our ending balance was greater than our beginning balance, then our actual return would have been an increase here. So you can see that a debit amount here, actual in return was an increase of $64,000. So our credit here, that would reduce our expen pension expense here by $64,000. Now, the opposite would be true here if our actual return was actually a negative amount. Say the fund lost money, that the uh, ending balance was ending balance, our ending balance here was less than the beginning balance, then we would have had a credit or a reduction here in our plan assets. It would have been a credit amount here. And then at that time, the debit amount would have gone to our pension expense, would have increased our pension expense here for the return. We would have had a negative return here on our plan assets, so that would increase our pension expense. So just go down to our little equation, just our note here, actual return, if it was a negative amount here, then our pension expense would be increased here instead of a reduction or no credit. It would have been a debit here or increase in our pension expense. Okay, so that's what, looking at our actual return here, how it's tied into our pension expense. And let's look at and see what is actually, we know what's included here in our plan assets. That's the fair value of those securities that we're holding at the beginning of the year here. Then we have our actual return. We have to, deter we have to determine our actual return is, and you can look at it in terms of our equation that we had up there. And just remember here, the actual return, that's either in this case, if it was, you had a positive return, it reduces our pension expense. If you had a negative return or actual return on your plan assets, then you would have an increase in your pension expense. So you have to know what the definition here is on your actual return. And then again, our plan assets here would be increased for any contributions made to the benefit plan or the plan or the benefit or the pension plan. In this case, we had an increase of 105,000, so that increased our assets here. And let's just say it was a cash payment made to uh, the pension plan. And then remember, the plan assets here are reduced by any benefits paid to the retirees. It's not coming out of cash. It's just going, uh, coming, reducing your plan assets here, $40,000. And you can see, let's just look at it in terms of our projected benefit obligation, which is our liability account. When it comes to these payments made to the retirees, you reduce your plan assets or credit it here by $40,000. And in this case, uh, we would debit or reduce our pension benefit obligation or our liability account here by $40,000. And then uh, the fair value, again, you have to determine what the fair value of your plan assets are at the end of the year here. And that is how you get your balancing amounts here. Just remember, the actual return here is really depends on whatever your fair value of your plan assets here are at the beginning of the year here versus your fair value of your plan assets here at the end of the year here. And then you have to include in a, um, in this case, you'd have to uh, subtract out the difference here. It's a little reverse logic here, but you'd have to subtract out the difference here uh, 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 between what were your contributions that were made to the plan here, less the benefits that were paid out of the plan. Just going back to your equation. Okay, and then one other thing here, what isn't included in the plan assets here? If we move over to our pension expense account here, we have our service cost here and our interest costs, which are an increase here in our pension expense. And then the projected benefit obligation or the liability would be for that service cost and our interest cost. And then one other thing here, the amortization of uh, pension expenses increased by whatever that uh, your pension plan, or whatever you're amortizing your uh, uh, projected benefit, uh, projected uh, uh, service cost here on your 
on your pension plan and that would go to other comprehensive income. I'm not showing it here, but all I wanted to point out here uh, for our pension expense, that return here, the return, your actual return on your plan assets here. If you have a positive return on your plan assets, it reduces your pension expense. If you have a negative return on your plan assets here, it increases your pension expense. And just remember how you would have to get to this actual return here. So if you were given your numbers here for your cash account, well, you could look at the debits and credits here, but you'd have to look at whatever is being contributed to your plan assets here in whatever benefits are being paid out of your plan assets and then you'd have to determine the fair value of the beginning versus the fair value of the end and then you could determine your actual return here on your plan assets now that would be a typical problem that would be going through here but let's go down here and let's look at again and just in our have it, our definition here expand on in a little bit. So our actual return on our plan assets here, looking at it in these terms. We take the fair value of the plan assets at the end of the year here, and I'm showing 769,000 in this case here. And then you take the fair value of plan assets at the beginning of the year here, I'm showing 640,000. If we go up there, there is our 640,000. And then we have to look to see if we make the comparison between the the end of the year here and the beginning of the year here and to have any increase or decrease in the fair value of the plan assets. Remember, everything has to be based on the fair value here. So in this case, we had an increase in our fair value of 769,000 at the end of the year versus the fair value of the plan assets at the beginning year. 640,000 gives us an increase here of 129,000. Now, the other thing we have to do for our calculation, this is where we'd be deducting here the contributions that actually increase these plan assets here of $105,000 less the benefits paid. The benefits paid were 40,000 here. So looking at our deduction here, 105,000 less the f f benefits paid of 40,000 gives us a balance here of $65,000. So compare that to our, in this case, the increase in our fair value of our plan assets of 129,000, reduce it by or deduct 65,000 here uh, based on our contributions and our benefits paid, gives us the actual return here on our plan assets of $64,000. Okay, so that's that's our how we go about calculating here the actual return on our plan assets. So remember, you start with your fair values here. You have to determine the end of the year versus the beginning of the year. Determine if you have any increases or decreases in these fair value of your plan assets, and then you have to deduct out the contributions that were made to the uh, pension or your plan assets or your pension plan here, less the benefits paid. And the difference here, you would be deducting. Whatever you come up with your difference here, you'd be deducting that here from your actual return here on your plan assets to de or from your uh, increase or decrease in the fair value of plan assets to determine what the actual return on your plan assets are. Okay. So that'll summarize our discussion here on plan assets. And we can go back and look at it one more time here. Just remember here, you start out with the beginning of the year, whatever your plan assets are, the fair value here. And then you have to also determine the fair value of the, at the end of the year of your plan assets. You know, we're talking about the security investments and so forth. And then you have to know what uh, contributions, if any, were made to the pension plan here. And then you would have to also know what uh, benefits were paid out of the pension plan. And then based on our equation that we went through here, you could determine the actual return here on your plan assets. But just remember here, you can't just look at the fair value at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year versus the fair value at the end of the year to determine what the, what the return on the uh, plan assets or the investment is. You have to also include those contributions that are made to the plan here and the benefits that are paid out. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion.